Billy Joe Armstrong was born in Oakland, California, February 17, 1972. Welcome to Billy is the youngest of six kids. He was coddled and taken care of quite well by all of his siblings, and because he was so sweet and cute, everybody just loved him. We moved to Rodeo in 1976, and Billy Joe was about four. Rodeo was really kind of this boring working class town about 15 miles away from Berkeley and kind of a, a nasty part of the East Bay here in San Francisco. My father's name was Andrew Marcicano Armstrong. He was a truck driver, an ex Golden Glove boxer, strong as an ox. His father was like the patriarch. He had a big presence. My stepfather, Billy's dad, was a, a drummer. He was a really good jazz drummer. He played in bands, and so there was always music in our house. My mom and stepdad always encouraged the kids. We all had music lessons. But Billy Joe sucked most of the musical talent out of my parents. He started playing music around four. He started with singing. One, two, three. Four. He cut a record called Look for Love. Look for Love. He had a really sweet voice, and on the back side, the B side, is an interview with him. Billy Joe, you've just made your very first record. How does it feel? Wonderful. I love it. And he would tour as sort of like a traveling show with other performers, and my father would play drums. Billy's dad and him, they were real tight. There was a definite bond there. Our family it was a real cohesive unit, real loving, a lot of laughter. But we kind of lost the family structure, you know, it kind of disappeared and crumbled around us. It was like the first week of school. I remember being, you know, a brand new year. We were sitting at uh, the kitchen table and my father walked in and he looked at my mother and he started crying. And um, they went back into the back room and then later came out and told us that he had cancer. Summer has come and passed The innocent can never last When we found out my stepdad was sick, it was very emotional. You knew he was dying because he was a big, strong man and he just, you could see him just withering away slowly. And within four months, he had died. And um, it was pretty devastating. Drenched in my Pain again. My father was only 54 at the time, and Billy Joe was 10. It was pretty hard for him because, I mean, you know, you're like you're in fifth grade, and all of a sudden your dad's gone, you know? What do you do with that? It's your dad. He's gone. After my stepdad died, everything changed. Mom had to work harder, uh, so he, Mom didn't get to spend as much time with Billy. She went to work, and she told us, let's move forward, and let's not talk about this. And um, so it left a lot of stuff unsaid and a lot of emotions not experienced. Billy, after his dad died, I think he immersed himself a lot in music. It was pretty overwhelming for him, not having the words or a way to communicate. So that's when he got his first guitar. That's what kept him going. He was like, I'm going to do this for my dad. So let me focus all my energy in this direction. And it just came organically for him. The guy was just gifted. I mean, God reached down, he touched him, he said, this is what you're going to do. It was shortly after that, him and Mike hooked up. They were around 11. They were inseparable, playing music together, hanging out together. Mike was really kind of a spastic, skinny character. Skinny, hyper, obnoxious, and funny. Like, all in one. Billy Joe Armstrong considered himself an outcast from birth. He grew up middle class in Rodeo, California, a gritty San Francisco suburb dominated by a vast oil refinery. Well, Rodeo just sucked, you know, I mean, it was, it was terrible, it was a terrible town. There's nothing there, there's, there's no movie theaters, there's nothing for kids to do. seeing it spray painted somewhere on the side of this wall or it said Bordeo because I mean there there was nothing to do in that town Billy Joe's family was strictly blue-collar his mom was a waitress his dad drove a truck 
There is some struggling here and there, but one thing that I learned as a kid, just be thankful for the things that you do have because there's always someone that's got worse than you. Don't worry about who's got more. There was always music in the Armstrong house. His dad was a jazz drummer, and by the age of eight, Billy Joe was playing guitar. <laughs> Trying to mimic the pounding chords of heavy metal he heard on the radio. I really started getting into music at a pretty young age, the early Van Halen days, or ACDC. I loved bands that had character and were a solid unit. But when Billy Joe was just 10, the solid unit of his family was unexpectedly torn apart. My dad got uh, cancer of the esophagus, and um, it ended up uh, spreading to the rest of his body. And by the time the doctor said that he got it, three months later, he was dead. The sad part was his dad worked a lot, so they didn't, he didn't spend a, you know, a lot of quality time with him. You know, as he hit his teen years, it really started hitting him that, you know, I, I don't have my dad. His mom had to wait tables at night to support the family, so the kids were left to their own devices. I was always uh, climbing through the, the back window to get into the house every day after school. It's like TV dinners, and uh, there was nothing that was really keeping us as like a family unit anymore. I mean, it was, it was um, we put the funk back in dysfunctional, let's put it that way. <laughs> In fifth grade, Billy Joe became best friends with another latchkey kid flirting with delinquency. I had like 75 detentions, and the principal calls me in, and he's laughing, going, Mike, nobody in the school has more detentions than you. He was so obnoxious, and people would get irritated with him. But I always thought it was funny, and I think a lot of it had to do with trying to get a laugh out of me all the time. The new friends had a common love for all things antisocial, especially the furious sound of hardcore punk. A show in Minnesota, Billy Joe laid his eyes on a dark-haired beauty in the crowd. We we're playing in someone's basement in Dinky Town in Minneapolis. I saw this woman that had long black dreadlocks, and she was just beautiful. There was definitely an attraction from the beginning. Her name was Adrian, and after the show, she approached Billy Joe and asked him where she could buy the band's record. I think I gave him my phone number and told him to call me and tell me how I can get a 7-inch. I started calling her and started talking to her on the phone. And our conversations just got longer and longer and more frequent. She was taking a human sexuality class, and she started talking to me about this class. He would always ask me about my class, and it was sort of a lead-in to talking about sex, you know? <laughs> and for a kid that's 18, some woman that's about 20, 21 years old talking to you about her human sexuality class, well, our conversations got pretty long. After a few months of hefty long-distance bills, Billy Joe organized another tour of the Midwest just to see Adrian. Billy's like, hey, let's go to play a gig in Minnesota. Adrian's from Minnesota. Hmm. I ended up kissing her. And then I, I went home and I wrote, uh, 2,000 light years away. It was a very sweet song and, you know, him writing a song for me was very romantic and exciting. He wrote some of those songs on Dookie when he was 18 years old. He's 29 now and he's writing songs that reflect where he's at and his place in life. Wives and kids will be on the tour bus with them. We're going to load up the... Uh tour bus with a bunch of toys and bicycles and we're gonna bring the kids and make it the summer camp <laughs> on wheels <laughs> day is gonna be punk on their own terms there are some of these bands that nowadays are saying why did you want to be a rock star was it the money and the girls blah, blah, blah. you know it's like F you you know it's not about that for me it was about the music and about your philosophy and your politics you know just be honest with yourself.